Welcome back to my channel. I'm then designing the building which is going on currently and eventually the sailing of my 7 meter or 23 foot sharpie. In this video I show you how I convert my 12 volt anchor max winch to a 48 volt winch by replacing the motor and adapting it to the winch base. This winch will not be used for pulling up the anchor, but will be used to haul up the dagger board, which is ballasted with 240 kgs of lead. So let's see how lucky I am to find a motor that's fit for purpose. And here it is. It's 48 volts. It's got a very similar footprint up against the bottom of the winch. And it looks like I'll be able to adapt it. It's on its way from China. And here it is on the right. And it's being compared here with the um, 12 volt motor on the left. Because I've got a 48 volt system, so it just makes it easier. This part's not easier. And I could have done it another way. I could have used the DC DC um, transformer. But so anyway, there's a few things to deal with. So let's get into it. So here's what I've got to do to make this work. This end plate off the new motor has to go on here, be mounted on here. Um, the spigot is a little bit bigger in diameter. It's not much, but it will have to be machined very concentric to the bearing housing. So I'll probably make a spigot to make that work. So that's a fairly easy job if you've got a lathe. The other thing is the bolts, the through bolts on the new motor are five millimeters. On the old motor where they tapped into here, they were six millimeters. So what I'm going to do is open these holes out on the new motor end plate to six millimeters and I'm going to countersink some screws into them so I'll be mounting the plate on here before I mount the motor and then on this plate here I'll be making some new holes at probably 90 degrees to these holes it's not easy to film looking at like at it like this with the camera and point at the same time but um, so that's what I'll be doing. I'll be making two new five millimeter holes. So the bolts, these ones can go through and mount. They actually mount on this, their motor mounts on this side. It'll be a bit of fun because there's a spigot there. So making drill, drilling holes on the edge of a spigot is not easy. But um, that's the, the other thing I've got to do. The next thing I've got to do is this shaft here is um, bigger than this shaft on the winch that doesn't matter too much it's a bit of a difference in diameter there this is 10 millimeters this is 15 millimeters the critical part is the slot is bigger on this side than the slot on the winch so what I've got to do I've thought and thought about what's the best way to do this most reliable way easiest way because I haven't got a milling machine or a spark erosion device but what I'm going to do is I'll probably make up a spacer as shown here it works out to be exactly one millimeter either side so that'll be a bit tricky but it so happens one of my rulers is one millimeter thick exactly and I've got three of them three six inch rulers so I might be attempting to use that ruler material which is good um, resilient steel sort of semi stainless steel so I'll be making up a spacer spaces which um, probably go around the outside of this shaft 
sort of slides onto the this shaft and so the other one will fit over the top and it won't be able to fall out it'll stay in place so this is out of the sail drive of my last boat and this diameter here is exactly the same size as that bearing outer diameter so all I'll have to do is dial up I might even have to use the forge jaw to get it running really true then I can put this on here and I can machine up this spigot here is less than a millimeter to take off this diameter to make it fit. I've got it running within a hundredth on all four points of the compass. So that's near enough. This is a good opportunity to see how accurate their machining was in the factory when they swapped this plate end for end to machine the other side. So here it goes. That's about the extreme of the run out, which is about 800 of a millimeter. So that's about three to four thou of an inch. It's not great. Here, yeah, we'll be able to make it better than that. So I've got to take the spigot from 63.3 to 62.7. In folds of midnight water side by side We sons and daughters sleep Except for, for no king's orders But we'll sail together We're going to see if all my <clears throat> calculations and machining uh, was accurate. These holes I had to nudge over towards the center um, by 0.4 of a millimeter. They had slightly different um, circle diameters. So let's see. So far so good. The spigot fits really well. Wow, that screw's gone in without rubbing the sides. And so is the second one. That has worked out so well. And I didn't make it. So all that's left to do on here is um, tap out this hole and this hole, five millimeters to suit those threaded rods there. And I'm not looking forward to this one, but I've given it a lot of thought as to how I'm going to do it. But that slot there, as I mentioned before, is too big relative to that head of that shaft. It's um, a millimetre clearance on either side. So I'm going to have to make some special kind of packer. It's 2025 already. What happened? Anyway, I hope you guys had a good break and I'll try and get back into it today and finish off this project.
Well, that's that part finished. It went really well. There was a little bit too much penetration of the weld on the corners. Pretty hard not to. It's only a millimeter. But it's stainless steel, so I didn't really have the right files. But I had to file out the insides of those corners. It's only taken about an hour or two. And it all fits together. Just like that. I hope I haven't made things too neat a fit because that relies on everything running really true. The bearing cap that that bearing sits in, I, as you saw how I machined it, it should be really concentric. So I can't see there being any problems. Assembly has begun and this is the test really to see if it's all good. And it is, things are, the armature's turning freely, which is quite a relief. So I think this is going back together for the final time before it's installed in the boat. It's not easy to put back together with um, this brush configuration, but I've found a way to do it with these two rulers holding the brushes up in their place. I'm a fitter and tuner by trade, so I'll be very confident that the uh, modifications to adapt this 48 volt motor to this Maxwell Anchormax winch will work. Um, the, <laughs> the wiring is um, really low amperage, but I'm not going to have any load on the motor. And it is higher voltage than 12 volts, so right there you can drop the wires, but definitely won't be using these wires for the final installation. So, the moment of truth, will it work? Oh yeah, there's no load on it, but it seems to be running really smoothly. I'm not 100% sure yet if the motor is the same RPMs as the motor I replaced, but um, it's running fairly fast, but not, I wouldn't say, excessively fast. So I would call that a win, and um, now I can get back to Finishing off the galley and the video will be out for that soon. Thanks for watching.